Well, greetings and salutations. This is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. This little video, I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the 3D printer. I keep getting lots of people asking me about how I'm getting on with the 3D printer and uh, to sort of do more videos on it. Now, about, oh, I don't know, uh, probably about a month ago now, I bought a 3D printer kit and I built it. And this is known as the Annette A8. And it's pretty much, um, it's, it's kind of a cheap uh, Chinese printer. A lot of people uh, who are just getting into printing um, go for this particular model because there's an awful lot of support for it. And uh, if you have any issues with it, the chances are uh, somebody's written something somewhere on one of the forums uh, to help you get through it. Now, I've been using this for the last month or so and it's been working beautifully. And uh, one of the things I did was I printed out uh, this model of um, a, a Space 1999 Eagle. And uh, that was pretty much my first major project. But uh, obviously, as you can see, um, <laughs> I didn't print it out in one go. I printed it out in pieces and then assembled it because obviously uh, you can only print uh, what will fit on this bed. Now, the thing with the Annette A8 is it will work completely stock. You know, it'll do the job it's supposed to do. But there have been a few uh, concerns about it regarding uh, the safety aspect of things. And don't quote me on this, but from what I've been reading, there appear to have been um, some of them have been kind of left unattended and had a bit of a meltdown and um, people have, have been having issues. Now, one of the problems was uh, the stock power supply unit, uh, which comes with it. This, if I can take that off, this is the stock power supply unit that came with this Annette A8, uh, and that would fit on the side there. Now, apparently, um, there are people on YouTube who know a lot more about um, electrical safety than I do. They've dissected these, and they've basically not been happy uh, with the amount of kind of redundancy or safety um, backups and uh, so a lot of the people who have bought printers with this particular power supply have actually replaced the power supply. Now it will do the job um, but like I say it's kind of it gets a bit maxed out and it can get quite warm and uh, so one of the first things I did was actually printed out a cowling this white thing uh, for a standard computer fan uh, and that just pops straight onto the, uh, the the power supply unit and then you just literally plug that straight into the 12 volt output here um, and that kept things nice and cool and I ran with that for a little while uh, but in the end I still wasn't entirely confident especially if I was going to kind of leave it running on its own uh, so in the end I fitted a proper um, a much beefier power supply unit and this particular one is a 500 watt modular um, power supply unit for a, a regular PC computer and uh, there are videos on uh, YouTube that show you exactly how to swap it over but because um, the main output on these is 12 volt because the, the output on this is 12 volt as well um, it's literally a case of swapping them over and then swapping the wires over so it wasn't too difficult uh, another thing that I did uh, from a purely from a safety aspect uh, see if I can turn this around with one hand I fitted a cowling over the um, the main circuit board so that I could again put a small computer fan in there and that just keeps things nice and cool um, because when I was using the original uh, power supply unit uh, what was happening was the the power the, the, the full 12 volts that were needed to heat this bed up were actually running through this circuit board um, so in order to take the pressure off the circuit board uh, I fitted something called a MOSFET um, or a, MOS, a MOSFET, I think it is called. And this basically takes the, um, the heavy duty power uh, away from the circuit board uh, and, and it kind of creates its own circuit board, which it then feeds off to the bed um, so that this main circuit board uh, doesn't actually get too much uh, voltage going through it and too much amperage going through it. 
um, and it just sort of takes the pressure off everything and nothing gets quite so hot anymore. Um, so yeah, so I fitted this uh, moss fair. Again, very, very simple to fit. It's just kind of like a bypass. You think of like how a, a bypass works, you know, sort of going around a village on a road, same sort of thing, but obviously in electrical terms. Now, another safety thing that I did with uh, this particular model is I soldered the uh, the wires directly to the board. You've got two main feed power supply wires, which are the heating uh, that uh, you know sort of create the heating element side of things. Um, now, because of the the constant moving of this bed, what's apparently uh, happens is um, you can end up with these little joins because the, the, the joins aren't fully up to the job. The joins can start pitting and wearing out, and again that can cause issues, overheating issues. Um, and all sorts of safety questions. So what a lot of the owners of these boards do is they solder the wires directly on. And that's exactly what I've done there. I've just used two spade uh, connectors and fitted them onto the two end pieces, which are uh, all originally connected together. Um, but what I did was I cut the plug so that the, um, the little plug in the middle, that's the temperature gauge uh, monitor. And uh, that's the original fitting, but that's not under pressure. So, um, and that, that's worked absolutely beautifully for me. And like I say, these are really good solid joins now. And uh, so hopefully with these safety things in mind, it should run without any, any kind of dangerous issues. Um, and like I say, just by using um, a, you know, a branded name power supply unit, it should hopefully have all the necessary checks and balances in place. Um, so that if anything untoward did happen, it would just kind of cut out. I'm assuming that's what happens anyway. Um, I hope I never actually have to find out. Um, another print that I did was I printed these two little arms here and uh, got a bit of uh, rhubarb and uh, I've actually mounted the filter, uh, sorry, the filament um, above the unit rather than on the little cable reel that used to sit at the back. Uh, because that now means I can put the, the printer right up against the wall or right close into the corner so it's not taking up lots of space. Um, I've also done a few other little things, got a little bit of a cowling around the, um, the readout screen here and around the buttons. Uh, again, these are just little programs that you can fi find on uh, places like Thingiverse. And, um, uh, yeah, Thingiverse, absolutely amazing. There are so many programs on there. If you if you need a, a gizmo or a gadget uh, for something, um, you just type it into Thingiverse and the chances are someone has designed it and put it up there and you just download it, um, run it through a little bit of software on your, uh, on your computer um, and then you just plug in a little S mini micro SD card um, with the program on it and uh, the computer on here will run it, which is great. I even printed this out, which is like a little uh, interchangeable, um, like a little uh, desk tidy uh, for all my little tools. And uh, again, everything printed out, including that um, that cowling there, that was printed out. It was one of the first things I printed, actually. Um, also, I changed over the, the nozzle. Um, originally, when I first had it, you may remember from my very first print, I printed out this big circular nozzle. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't work that well and it kept hitting the uh, the actual job piece and pulling the piece off the bed. Um, so what I've got there now, hopefully you can see, it, it's just two, like a twin nozzle um, that blows air in from two separate sides. Um, and that one works really well, so I'm quite pleased with that. Now, in regard to actually using the thing, um, I have to admit, I haven't used it that much. Um, since printing out the... Uh, the big model here, um, I, I included that in a previous video I was trying to put it on green screen. Um, I've hardly used it. I, I used it uh, the other day to print out that um, that desk tidy. But for the moment, um, I haven't really had a huge amount of use for it. Although saying that, I did print out a little gift um, for a friend of mine who's into Lord of the Rings. I printed them out a little tiny uh, model of Helm's Deep um, just as a little gift. And I've got another friend who was into min minions. So I actually printed out a little minion and painted it up. And that looked quite good. I got, got some varnish on it and it looked really good. Um, but so it's good for like printing out little personalized gifts. Um, but at the moment, um, as far as, you know, needing widgets go, um, there's not a lot I need. Although saying that, I've just discovered something called LARPing, which I'm sure I'll make a video on at some point. 
and um, I do believe there are a number of accessories uh, available to print out um, for uh, LARPing so uh, I shall talk about that in another video so there we go that's my experiences with the 3d printer um, as of like a month after owning it um, really good this particular model it's worked beautifully it's hardly given me any cause for concern I've hardly had any uh, wasted prints the biggest problems have been getting things to stick to the bed um, but I've I've sort of sussed it out by putting um, this blue tape on um, and then just rubbing a little bit of sandpaper over it to rough it up and that seems to have done the trick I've also bought the the base temperature down as well originally I was using I think it was about 60 degrees um, but I put it down to about 45 and things for some reason seem to stick to it a bit better and that's using PLA uh, which is this particular stuff you can also print um, something called ABS uh, but apparently it stinks and it gives off horrible fumes and uh, you need higher temperatures to get involved with that and I, to be honest I don't really know what the advantages um, are of, of um, ABS over PLA so but this PLA has served me well so I'll, I'll stick with that for the time being um, but there we go so that is my um, adventures in in 3d printing I'm glad I got it uh, I'm, I'm sort of you know my life feels just that little bit more complete by having a 3d printer and I know that if anything uh, crops up and you know happen happen to need a, a specific thing uh, it may be very possible that I can print it out um, which is uh, which is quite quite fun and exciting to know if you like that sort of thing um, so there we go so hopefully that's uh, helped anybody who was curious uh, about uh, how I'm getting on with it um, I'm gonna, gonna give it a thumbs up uh, with just a few little like I say modifications uh, I've gone from having a you know a, an okayish printer to actually quite a good one and I'm really pleased with it so there we go I hope that was useful to someone thanks for watching have a great rest of the day and I will see you in a future video until then take care